Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a brand introduction for Harlem Candle Company, as well as an in-depth sniff candle review of one of their latest releases, the St. Nicholas Candle with essence of gingerbread and holiday spices. But before we dig into that, if you are new to Touch the Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com. But for now, I want to dig right into Harlem Candle Company. So I'm excited to do this brand introduction and in-depth sniff candle review for a couple of reasons. First of all, I find the idea of using Harlem, the place, the culture, the community, as a muse to create fine fragrances. And also because Harlem holds a special place in my heart because as some of you know, I lived in New York City for many years and about five of those were spent living in Harlem. Funnily enough, just off of St. Nicholas Avenue, which this candle is named after. And Harlem is such a special, unique place. The history, the living culture all around you, the shared experiences of the inhabitants, whether someone was born and raised there or they are a temporary, in my case, five-year visitor to that the space, the culture, the community. It's just really unique, really special. It is warm and inviting. There's such energy and history there. You're walking amongst history, some people who were there to see the history 50, 60, 80 years ago. And literally, you know, looking out my window, this is actually a view from my apartment. Beautiful. It feels like you're on the top of the world in Harlem. And I could see the Apollo Theater outside of my living room window. And on my walk to the grocery store, I would pass the Cotton Club nightclub. So just so much around you. It's it really a special place very inspiring and so understandably so it makes sense why the founder terry johnson was so inspired by harlem to create this brand so let's dig into the brand history learn about who they are then we'll talk about the product offering a little overview of harlem candle company's focus mission their vibe we'll talk about this specific candle and fragrance blend today my general assessment of it what i think of the fragrance get deep down into the notes because these are master perfumer built fragrances. They are going to have your traditional top, middle, and bottom note builds. And then of course, getting into the performance, the wick, the wax, the strength, the throw, the projection, all the stuff that's very important because I want candles that are unique, authentic, and of course, perform well. Their sort of brand statement is that they're a luxury home fragrance brand specializing in scented candles inspired by the richness of Harlem. It was founded in 2014 by lifestyle and travel expert Terry Johnson, and that the Harlem Candle Company is the manifestation of her love of fragrance, jazz, and Harlem itself. So Terry Johnson uh, is a world traveler, so native Texan, relocated, made her home in Harlem, traveled to, I believe, nearly or perhaps over, probably at this point, 70 countries worldwide, and along the ways, really discovered the power of scent, its ability to transport you time and place. We've talked a lot about that on this channel, if you've watched my videos, about the transportive powers and scent memory that fragrance brings to us every day in our lives, whether we're looking for it or not. And so when Terry Johnson relocated to Harlem, she really dug deep and discovered its history, its past, its its purpose. And Harlem became her muse to create the fragrance brand. It's focused very much on music icons like Billie Holiday and Duke Ellington, and they performed at places like the Savoy Ballroom and entertained at the Cotton Club and lived in places like Sugar Hill or along Lenox Avenue to really bring all those together to tell the stories of Harlem and its history. Like many fine fragrance, home fragrance brands, it started in Terry's kitchen in 2014, kind of concocting and working these ideas up on her own, and then over time evolved into now working with world-renowned master perfumers to bring the visions to life, which is the way to do fine home fragrance. And in this case, to really celebrate the Harlem Renaissance. So let's talk about the product offerings. Their primary focus is on candles as Harlem Candle Company. And their traditional candle is an 11 ounce candle. Can come in one wick or two wick. I will show you here. We have a glass jar, fairly traditional vessel. With the labels here, I find they feel somewhat artisanal or uh, I don't wanna say, you know, handmade, but they, they don't feel mass made. They really do feel like they have this, a bit of a handcraft to touch them, which is not necessary, but is, is nice. It does feel like it is an elevated quality of product. One or two wick 
depending on the fragrance, I believe they've kind of evolved mostly into the two wicks and the retail is typically around $48 on the traditional 11 ounce candles. They also have four ounce travel tins and they also have room sprays and reed diffusers. They have some special collections that are either in ceramic vessels or some really interesting ones that are 22 karat gold, almost cocktail glasses that either are decorative or have a historical map of Harlem on them. Really beautiful candle vessels and, and wonderful gifting as well. And those tend to run a little bit higher potentially. Again, if you're talking about 22 karat gold plated glass, it's gonna run higher than just your typical vessel here. But again, these are traditionally around $48. And they just recently launched EDPs, so Eau de Parfum, for the body, so fine fragrance, not just fine home fragrance. And so they have one fragrance in that and more is to come per Terry Johnson founder. So they just recently launched their holiday 2022 collection, which has three candles, Vintage Garden, which is the essence of Angelica and Birchwood, then After Dark, which is the essence of bourbon, vanilla, and oak, and the one I'm doing my in-depth sniff review on today, which is St. Nicholas, the essence of gingerbread and holiday spice. So you've got the pack in here. Your box has a bit of that traditional Harlem map here. Very charming. And then a packing card that talks about the scent. So I will read this to you as you can see it here as well. So for St. Nicholas, it says St. Nicholas Avenue, a bustling thoroughfare darts clear across the neighborhood of Harlem from start to end and is named after St. Nicholas, a patron saint of New Amsterdam known for his charity. Also named as an homage to St. Nicholas is another generous man of legend, St. Nick, or as he's more affectionately known, Santa Claus. This candle pays joyful tribute to St. Nicholas and all of these iconic variations and is a magnificent way to bring a luminous holiday glow into your home. Inhale and you can smell the irresistible aroma of just baked gingerbread wafting out of an elegant brownstone window on the avenue. Melding with a burst of zestful mandarin and vibrant cardamom, a delectable heart of cinnamon bark and nutmeg, is tempered by crisp aromatic pine needles, warm cedar, spiced clove, and sweet amber molasses bring a joyful finish to this addictively beautiful blend that perfectly celebrates the season. Well, yes, I agree with, with all of that. So very unique. You can tell just by the, the fragrance story before you even get into sniffing it and understanding what you get from it, that it is this beautiful blend of the art of it, as well as of course the science that goes into building a fragrance blend. First, what do I get? And then we're gonna dig into all the notes. This is a brightly festive, rich, spicy gourmand. It's not a foodie gourmand, so it's not a direct literal interpretation of a gingerbread cookie or gingerbread fresh out of the oven. It's not gonna smell just like the baked good. As it says, it's an essence of, so it is inspired by, it is reminiscent of, but it is the conceptual blend, which I love the idea of conceptual blends, that puts you in a space, in a place, in a time where it is holiday and there may be these type of scents around you, but it's not like literally cutting into and eating a slice of gingerbread. So for me, I get the warming spices, the cinnamon, nutmeg and clove, but very non-traditional. So don't think, you will not pick out, I dare you, to try to pick out a sort of that spicy red hot cinnamon, you're not gonna get that in here. You have the warming spices, the cinnamon, nutmeg, the clove, non-traditional because it's also balanced with a really fresh brightness from your mandarin, some cool green cardamom, most likely, and the true kind of spicy, uplifting ginger. So it's not just your baked ginger or crystallized ginger, it's, it's a bit of that spicy, uplifting ginger. The gourmand then kicks in with some warmth of that, what they're calling amber molasses, kind of that combo of the two making this accord that consists of dark, rich, almost burnt sugar with some earthy vanilla, still sweetly resinous, a little bit dark, a bit of that soft wood with the cedar wood, but not being woody. This is a, a blend that is, you know, dash, dash, dash. It's spicy, woody, fresh gourmand, which seems very paradoxical. Like, how is it brightly festive, but also rich and dark and gourmand and spicy? It just really works together. So this is certainly a gourmand for those who think they may not love gourmands, but you don't have to like gourmands to enjoy this. It's just so well balanced. It, it's so pretty because there's such a soft, warm depth to it. And the spices are there, but it is unlike any sort of traditional off the shelf holiday spice blend that you'd find. Uh, like Bath and Body Works. It, it's not the Bath and Body Works holiday, tis the season, cinnamon clove buds, wreath blends, all of that. Not, really, it's not like that. And that's no hate on that. You know, I, I purchase and enjoy Bath and Body Works candles. There's, there's no shade thrown to that. But this really is a different experience of holiday spices. And when you have 
what may at first glance seem strange to have some mandarin or cardamom thrown in there, it really brightens it so that it's not a one note or you know four note blend. It's the, it's the full balance of these 12 notes that really are chosen together just, just so nicely. So I really enjoy this. It is a holiday blend, sure, but it's a, a fresher, more all-encompassing expression of a sort of gingerbread spice candle. Let's dig into the notes a bit. So mandarin, also known as tangerine, is gonna bring sweet, fruity, almost like a neruli floral undertone, oftentimes. It's sunny, and it's known to blend well with spices, particularly holiday. You think of, if you have a pomander with cloves, it's gonna be stuck in maybe an orange, but oftentimes a mandarin or a tangerine. Then we dig into ginger. Ginger is bracing, it is uplifting, warm, spicy, that kind of nose tingling spicy, not like the heat spicy, but like tingles your nose. Fresh, borderline almost like a woody citrus note to ginger in fine fragrance. And then we balance that, the final top note here, with cardamom, a seed pod, warm, spicy, sometimes camphorous medicinal leaning, like a eucalyptus, but also can be more woody, floral, sweet leaning as well. It's the main ingredient in chai, if you're familiar with masala chai. And there really are two varieties of, of cardamom. So there can be a black cardamom that is more woody, earthy, smoky almost. And then there's the green cardamom that is fresher, almost maybe minty, kind of eucalyptus style. And this one I feel like is that more of the green, fresh, bright cardamom versus a, something deeper and smokier. Then working our way into the middle notes, cinnamon bark, everyone knows what cinnamon smells like, of course, but this is your soft, almost powdery, dry cinnamon. So it's a warm, dry spiciness. Sweet freshness to start, but enticing, comforting, kind of sweet. Like if you get a, a really good quality cinnamon and you taste just a little bit of it by itself, it has a sweetness to it, though there's not sugar. Throw in an additional spice with nutmeg, of course, sister scent to cinnamon in many ways. That is a fruit seed from a tree. It's gonna be warm, sweet, lightly spicy, a bit earthy, balsamic, kind of creamy, a little bit more subtle than say your cinnamon or, or certainly clove. And then the final middle note in here is pine needle. So of course there are 115 plus varieties of pine, so hard to say which, but when you're talking about pine and specifically the needles, it's gonna be that refreshing woody spiciness. Again, you see there's spice, spice, spice in this, as they say, holiday spice, not limited just to your baking spices, your cinnamon, your cloves, your nutmegs, but the spiciness from pine or even the cardamom. But pine is gonna give you that traditional crisp, outdoor, somewhat sweet, balsamic, little bit of resinous background to it, that sappiness, but it is not at all overwhelming in here. It would almost be hard to pick out on its own, but if you're looking for it, you can kind of see it playing with balancing between the cardamom, green, eucalyptus, mintiness, though I don't think this is actually a mint scented candle, with that pine, both that kind of green, almost camphorous, but yet a, a hint of resin to it as well. Then we get into our three base notes. Of course, cedarwood, deep, dark, resinous, soft, earthy, Sweet, can be somewhat camphorous and cooling. Think your pencil shavings that you grew up with. It's considered less minty than say a pine might be and less musky than a patchouli leaf could be. And when it comes to cedar, there are many varieties of cedar. There are true cedars like your Atlas cedars. There's also your junipers from the Cypress family that are often used as a variation. Think your Virginia and Texas cedars. Then we go into clove your dried flower buds, sweet, rich, spicy, warm, woodsy, also has a bit of that camphor edge to it, can be almost medicinal if overused. And clove trees are actually a type of evergreen that are native to Eastern Indonesia. And so then we have amber molasses. So an interesting mix there of amber typically is going to be an accord note on its own, combination of maybe some benzoin, vanilla, tonka, labdanum, things that are going to mimic ambergris to give you that warm, rich, resinous, powdery, sweet, almost animalic, though it is not expressed quite that way in this fragrance, but that kind of spice vanilla. And then molasses, if we're kind of combining that as a variation on amber, molasses is a byproduct of sugar production. And it's warmly sweet, earthy, robust, deep, slightly bitter. Think brown sugar and vanilla, but very intense. And so that very intense, deep, dark, sugared earthiness from a vanilla mixed with your amber to give that slightly elevated, resinous, sweet, woody, almost musky, 
Amber gives you a true earthy vanilla gourmand base that probably 30% of this candle is based on. So when you look at overview of it, it's got that base of this almost seductive, at least alluring, vanilla-like amber depth, and then layered on with a bit of the green from, again, the cardamom, the pine needles, some traditional spices from your clove, your nutmeg, your cinnamon, and then your spiciness from your ginger, and again, that cardamom, and that freshness from the zest of that mandarin to give a little bit of that fresh brightness that would otherwise be missing if it was all dark, heavy, spicy, resinous. So just, again, and it's an intoxicating blend, and I would say that would be the way I would describe this brand if I had to describe it in one adjective, no one asked me to, but I would say intoxicating because each of these blends that I have here, because I also, I failed to mention before, I have also purchased and burned, I have not yet reviewed, but can if there's interest. The Speakeasy Candle, which is Essence of Bourbon and Palo Santo, incredible. Then maybe, oh, hard to see, this will be my favorite, the Renaissance, which is Essence of Tea and Tonka, out of this world. And finally, Lennox, Essence of Seductive Flowers, a unique fruity twist, almost, on flowers, but they're all intoxicating in their own ways. Super unique. None of these really smell like anything I've ever smelled before, which is also always the sign of a masterful blend. It's not a dupe. It's not even necessarily an interpretation of. It really stands on its own as these beautiful fragrances. So speaking of the performance, very important. These are the two wicks. I do prefer the two wicks versus one wick because it's going to be a much healthier pool. A soy blend. Soy is heavier wax. It's going to take a bit longer to pull out. It's The actual molecules are heavier, so it's a blend, meaning my assumption is there's, if not paraffin, some other sort of vegetable wax in here that is maybe a bit lighter than soy to help with some of that throw and projection to get the fragrance molecules up in the air in your nose. Overall, very good. I will say the two things with these candles that I've noticed is sometimes you do have to start it with a foil sleeve around it to ensure you're going to get a full pull across the edge. Less likely to be needed with the two wicks, but certainly with the one wicks, I have experience needing it. But it's one of those things that it's not every time. And once it gets going, it typically on your subsequent burns pulls out on its own more readily. And with these two, I've noticed you really do have to trim them pretty tight because there was some sooting on a few of them when they were kind of my average length. Like this may work, but this, this could soot. So it may even need to be trimmed just a tiny bit tighter for the next burn to ensure that it doesn't get the ratio of wax carbon going in there and just being burnt off as soot. So they take a little bit of work sometimes, but worth it. And something that I do believe that they're constantly working on tweaking to get to that ideal space. The strength, very strong. They're, these are the kind of candles you take them out and some brands say this and it's like, okay, yeah, right. Set it on your desk and it's like, you can smell it. It fragrances your, maybe not your entire room, but your space. This, it really does. Sitting here, I can smell this even if I don't dig my nose up in it. I just dig my nose up in it because I love it so much. But when it comes to when these are burning and melting, the strength and throw is really nice. It is strong. I like a strong candle. It's not choke you out strong. It's not overwhelming. It's not, oof, what is that? Blow that out. It is present. It makes itself known as Harlem does. So why not? And... The projection is also quite nice. It will travel out of the room that it's in, and it just, it's a really nicely balanced strength and projection, kind of an ideal space for a luxury candle in my mind. So really pleased overall with that performance. Again, just every once in a while needing to make sure it's not sitting, and sometimes using the, the aluminum sleeve to ensure that it gets that full melt pool. So I'd love to hear if you have an experience with any of Harlem Candle Company's candles or other products. Let me know what you think of them. If you want to see in-depth sniff reviews on the other three scents that I mentioned here, please do let me know. I'd be happy to dig in and share my thoughts on those because they each really do deserve their own video. Wouldn't want to do a haul and just give the one-off, you know, two-minute spiel. As you know, if you've gotten this far, I like to go deep dive. I want an in-depth sniff review where we can learn together about all the masterfully built fragrance blends uh, to understand what we're sniffing, to enjoy that fragrance and get those scent memories created in our brains. So that is it for this time. If you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, take care.